Hey there, it's Ricardo and welcome to the second of 10 days of Photoshop for beginners. Today, we will see how to create open and save documents in Photoshop. Understanding the basics of file creation and management, it's absolutely essential because every time we work in Photoshop, we are working with documents. So buckle up and let's get started. In Photoshop, we've got a couple of ways to start a project. You can either create a brand new document from scratch or open up an existing file. But your documents are the foundations of your work. You gotta have one to get started, right? So let's start by creating a new one. There are actually multiple ways to do this. You can go up to File Menu and select New, or you can use the keyboard shortcut command or Control N. But there's also this handy blue button that you can click on to get the same new document window. Now, once you're in that window, you'll notice that there are a bunch of templates to choose from. If you click on the tabs on top, you can select different types of documents like photo, print or web. And if you want even more options, you can load up additional presets from the list or from Adobe Stock. But if you're looking for something really specific, you can customize your document manually over on the right hand side. You can give your project a name like my first document and then adjust the width, the height, the resolution and a bunch of other settings to your liking. Once you're done, just hit the create button and boom, you've got yourself a brand new Photoshop document. Alright guys, let's talk about opening documents in Photoshop. Sometimes you've already got a file ready to go, whether it's a Photoshop project or a raster image and you need to get it into Photoshop. There are a few ways to do this. You can hit Command or Control O or you can go up to File Menu and select Open, which will bring up a dialog box for you to select your file. And here's a pro tip for you. If you need to open multiple files at once, just hold down Command or Control and click on the files you want to open. Then hit Open button and you're good to go. Now, sometimes when you open multiple images, they might not show up in the way you want them to. Maybe they're spread out all over the place and you're having a hard time navigating between them. If that's the case, just go up to Window menu and select Arrange and then choose Consolidate all to tabs. This will group all your documents together into tabs so you can easily switch between them. But if you need to see two or more images at the same time for a particular project, you can choose Float All in Windows from the same window and go down to Arrange menu. It really just depends on what you need. Now, let's say we've got two images open and we need to work on both of them. No problem. Just grab the Move tool, click and drag from one document to the other and it will copy the contents over. Or if you prefer, click on the background layer in the Layers panel. If you don't see it, just go up to Window menu and select Layers and drag it on top of the other image. Now let's close the second image and hit F to make the, this one in full screen so we can focus on it. And when we were working on the full screen image, it's really easy to navigate. Just hold down the spacebar and your cursor will turn into a hand. Then click and drag to move around in your image. You can hold on Option or Control to zoom in and out and just use your mouse scroll wheel. And if you want to zoom in or out quickly, just hold on the spacebar and command or control and click and drag left or right. It's super simple. All right, so we got the basics of creating and opening in Photoshop. Now let's talk about saving those files. When you finish a project in Photoshop, you have a lot of options for saving your work. For this tutorial, you'll need to open a specific document that I've prepared for you. You can find it in the project folder. If you don't have the project folder yet, don't worry, you can download it from free using the link in the video's description. Once you've got the project folder open, navigate to Day 2 folder, then to Saving folder, and finally open the saving file PST. This should give you something that looks like what I'm seeing on my screen. If you take a look at the layers panel, you'll see that this document has a few layers with various effects applied to them. We've got a gradient background, a text layer and an image layer with transparency around it. All pretty typical for a Photoshop project. Right now, this is a PST document, which means it's a Photoshop file that has all the layer data and effects saved. 
but if we want to save it as an image to send to someone who doesn't have Photoshop or to share on social media or print, we need to save it in a format that's suitable for those users. Let's start by saving it as a JPEG. JPEG is the most common file format for images on the web and it's also used in desktop publishing programs to create print layouts. When you're ready to save your image, come up to the file menu and scroll down to save a copy. This will bring up the save a copy dialog box. Here you'll need to choose a location on your computer to save the file to. I'm going to save mine in the saving folder in the project folder. What's important here is the format option, which is located at the bottom of the dialog box. By default, it will be set to Photoshop, but if you click on that option, you'll see a whole bunch of other file formats you can choose from. For this occasion, I'm going to choose JPEG. In the Save a Copy dialog box, you can change the name of the file if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Then click Save. This will bring up the JPEG Options dialog box. Here, you can adjust the compression of your image by changing the quality, so the lower the quality, the smaller the file size. You can see an estimated file size under the preview area that will change as you adjust the quality. Right now, I'm going to set the quality to 8 and click OK. When you save the file, you'll be brought back to the document. If you navigate to the folder where you saved the image, you should see a new JPEG file in there. This file is now ready to, to be sent via email, uploaded to social media or use it on a website. Alright, so if we take a look at this image here in Photoshop, you'll see that we have multiple layers with various effects applied. It's our image with all effects. But if I open up this image in Photoshop, you will notice that there's no multiple layers, just a background, that it's a raster image. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the larger the dimensions of an image, the larger image data will be. A JPEG image is essentially a raster image made up of pixels, and the more pixels that make up the image with uh, more unique shades of color, the more data will be saved inside the file, thus making it a larger data file. So it's important to consider the dimensions of an image, and we can see the dimensions of this image by pressing and hold command alt and pressing i currently we can see that this image is uh, 1800 by 1754 pixels at a resolution of 144 dpi that's rather large and if you're using the image for print it's best to keep the image as large as possible to maintain quality but if you intend to share the image on social media you could think about making the dimensions smaller to optimize the data file. For example, I'll change the resolution from 144 to 72 and change the width dimension to 900 pixels. I'll make sure my constraint aspect ratio link is applied and click OK. Now, my image uh, is substantially smaller but still big enough to see and appreciate the image. If I would like to keep the image and as the new smaller dimension, I can simply press Command S, the shortcut for save, and this will save the document. Now, if I close the image, the image data size will be smaller, and in theory, this image now contains fewer pixels and fewer unique shades of color, thus making it a smaller data file. This file will be easier to send over email or share over social media, so I'll close the document and come back to the Photoshop document. Ok, what about if I want to save my document with transparency? Let's try something different. So in the layers panel, I'm going to toggle the visibility of the gradient layer, the background uh, gradient layer. So now we have the vehicle and text on a transparent background. And we know this because we can see the grey and white grid texture in the background. Now I'm going to save this file that will maintain the transparency in the background. So I'll come up to File, down to Save As, and this time I'm going to click on Format and choose PNG from the option menu. PNG enables us to save the transparency, so with the format set to PNG, I'll simply click Save. 
In the pop-up PNG options, I'll just click OK. The file will be saved and we are back to the Photoshop document. So, if we now come back to the project folder, we can see that we have a new file with a PNG extension. If I open this image in Photoshop, we can see that it's now a single layer and we have a transparency around it. This image will be good to use on the web or in other programs like video software as it will maintain the transparency around. Now, depending on what we want to use the image for, we might also want to resize it. If we're planning to use it on a website, we could consider making it smaller and optimizing it for a web. But if we're planning to use it in a video, we might want to keep it larger to maintain the highest possible quality. For now, I will just leave it as it is and close the tab. And that's it. The next video will be about layers and masks. Layers are the fundamental basis for any artwork created in Photoshop. The Layers panel is one of the most important panels in this program. You will love it. Hope to see you there. Until next time, thank you.